Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Evermore we are breathing in your grace. Evermore we'll be breathing out your praise. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step, you were with us. Hey, Saturn Road, uh, here from Arkansas. Uh, just wanted to say that I'm thinking about you guys, and uh, I know we haven't been able to make a, a trip there in a while, but we miss you and we love you guys. And I uh, just wanted to say a quick prayer for uh, your church family. I know that it's not been a really, really easy time, uh, but just know that God is still with you and present. And uh, just want to say a quick prayer to ask him to continue to be with the body at Saturn Road. And so let's pray together. God, we are so thankful to know that even in times of uncertainty, times of difficulty, uh, times where we have a lot of questions that you are with us, that you love us. We're also thankful for the fact that the body of Christ is not contained within a building, that even as uh, Saturn Road is spread out all over the, the Dallas community, uh, that the body of Christ is present, that we can still love our neighbors, we can still be very active in your mission uh, in our communities and in, in our world. Uh, we just pray for your protection. We pray for your uh, peace to those that are in anxious times. And again, we just are so thankful to know that your spirit is dwelling within us and is with us. Thank you for connecting us to each other. And we love you so much. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Love you guys. As I look to you alone, fill me with your love. Mountains high or valleys low, you will never let me go. By your fountain let me drink, fill my thirsty Glorious, marvelous grace that rescued me. Holy, worthy is the Lamb who died for me. Blessed Jesus, come to me. As I fall down at your feet, let me touch your nail-scarred hands, Jesus, I will see. Glorious, marvelous grace that rescued me.
You know, I'm often asked questions about forgiveness. Um, and I'd like to share a few with you as we start. A question that I often get is, does someone have to ask in order to be forgiven? What do you think? Well, I think, no. Somebody doesn't have to ask. Um, Jesus, if you remember, said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke chapter 23. Obviously, those people weren't asking to be forgiven, but Jesus was asking for their forgiveness, and he had forgiven them. Uh, another question that I get quite often is, does forgiveness mean that I must forget what has happened? You know, sometimes some really painful things are done to us by other people. And can we forgive them and yet still remember and even feel the pain of what they've done to us? So does it mean I must forget what has happened in order to truly have forgiven somebody? Again, the answer to me is no. Um, Jesus talked in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 35 about forgiving each other from the heart. But remember this, sin has consequences. So sometimes those consequences are things that are just really difficult to forget. And I also would say this, you and I are not God. God can forget and remember as far as the east is from the west I remember your sin no more, but we're not God. Should we try to forget? Absolutely. But just because we remember the pain doesn't mean we haven't forgiven somebody. And then another question that I get quite often is, would it ever be right to withhold forgiveness? Just to say to somebody, I'm not gonna forgive you. And again, the answer would be no. Uh, let me read from the Bible, Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see... In some ways, it all comes back to this for the believer. We have been forgiven by God through Christ. So can we actually tell someone else, I won't forgive you when we have been forgiven so much by God? Uh, I don't think so. And so those are just a few questions about forgiveness. Now, there's an incredible story. Actually, the truth is there are many stories in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament about forgiveness. I'm thinking about one right now that is in the Old Testament. It's an incredible story of forgiveness. And it involves a man by the name of Joseph. Actually, when the story begins, he's a young man. And um, I'm gonna have to fast forward through a lot of the details. I would encourage you, get your Bible out. Go to the book of Genesis and read the story of Joseph. Read it all. It's an amazing, encouraging, faith-building uh, story about a man and his God and his family and how they triumphed over some really difficult things and the key was forgiveness. I will just tell you that when Joseph was about 17 years old, his own brothers, now get this, his own brothers sold him into slavery. They were so angry with him. They wanted to get rid of him. They literally sold him off as a slave. And he ended up in Egypt. And he spent about 13 years in prison in Egypt for something that he didn't do. And you can read that story, and we don't have the time to unpack all of that now. But I just want you to get a flavor about what had happened to Joseph, done to him by his own family. And then when he gets into this foreign land, uh, he is falsely accused. He spends years in prison. Uh, things don't go well for him. And again, it's not because of anything that he has done. It's just because people are treating him in the wrong way. And so you move forward in the story. And, and I love this. If you have a Bible and you want to turn to Genesis chapter 45, 
I'm going to read with you the first five verses. After years, and keep in mind, Joseph's brothers, his father, they have not seen him. His father thinks that he's dead because the brothers lied to the dad about what had happened to Joseph. And so finally, there's a family reunion. And Joseph uh, will meet with his brothers for the first time since all of this went down. Now imagine how you would feel uh, at that kind of meeting. Well, let me read now the way it unfolds in Scripture. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants. And he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he, Joseph, wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. An incredible story of forgiveness. Really, it's mind-boggling. But you know something? I've discovered in my life that when true forgiveness takes place between two people, it is mind-boggling. It's a miracle of God. It's an amazing thing. When we think about forgiveness, let's just be honest about it. It's one of the most powerful things on the planet. The sheer force of forgiveness can literally change a person's life. It can change a community. It can change a country. But it's really hard. See, that's why forgiveness is rare. Because genuine forgiveness is really, really tough. Let me give you two reasons. There are more, but I'm going to give you two. Because behind every act of forgiveness lies a wound. Somebody gets hurt. Somebody has to accept that they were hurt and bear the pain and say, but I'm going to forgive you. In spite of what you've done to me, in spite of this wound that you see and that I carry, I'm going to forgive you. Now, you know that's not easy. That's hard. Another reason is because forgiveness, just at the core, is not fair. And we live in a society, a culture that just screams, everything has to be fair. And if it's not fair, we're up in arms and we're complaining and we're outraged. But I got to tell you, true forgiveness is not fair. It's not fair. You're saying to somebody that hurt you, I'm going to release you. I'm not going to make you bear the guilt and the shame. I'm not going to repay you for what you've done to me. Forgiveness means it's not going to be fair. Do you forgive or do you not forgive? And I think our options in life come down to this. One, we can remain resentful and we cannot forgive, and we can close our hearts and our lives to people, and we can hold grudges, and we can remain angry. You know the word resent literally means to feel again. So when I choose not to forgive, which is an option, and again, let's be honest, many people exercise that option in life. You and I know people, maybe you are that person, that has chosen not to forgive somebody, and you have carried resentment and anger in your life, maybe for years. And resentment means what you do 
What I do is I just keep feeling again all of the pain, all of the emotions from what happened to me. I never let it go. Or we can forgive. That's an option. Well, let me say this right now. I've already made it clear. I think it's very biblical to say this. Forgiveness is not easy. So if anybody tells you, hey, it's no big deal, just forgive, get on with it, they're not really dealing in true forgiveness. Forgiveness is not easy. But what it does mean is you release. And here's the deal. Not only do you release the person who has hurt you, but you free yourself. I let myself go from the bitterness and the resentment and the baggage of what somebody else did to me. I let it go and I become free when I choose to forgive. Not long ago, before she died, in a moment of surprising candor, and it happened on television, Margahita Lasky, one of the best known secular humanists and novelists said, and I want you to listen to what she said. What I envy most about you Christians is your forgiveness. She said, I have nobody to forgive me. Isn't that amazing? Kingdom people, my brothers and sisters, it's a powerful thing that we live in and that we can give to other people because it has been given to us, and that is forgiveness. Now, why should we forgive? What motivates forgiveness in our lives? And you know, I'm thinking, I may be talking to somebody right now who needs to hear this very point because you need a little motivation. Maybe you need a lot of motivation in your life right now to forgive somebody. Well, let me give you a few reasons that should motivate you and me to forgive. Number one, because God has forgiven us. I've been forgiven by God. Therefore, I need to forgive other people. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. You see, Paul's saying, forgive other people. Come on, guys, you've got to forgive one another. Why? Because God forgave you in Christ. Um, let me read some of the most challenging words in all of Scripture, and they come from the lips of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm telling you, you're pretty familiar with these words. But when you stop, like I did this past week, and just pause again and think about what Jesus is actually calling us to do, you talk about hard. But you talk about the ability to change the world. And right now in our country, what's going on, all of the anger, all of the conflict, folks, here's the answer. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Will it work? Absolutely. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son, our Father in heaven, to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow. But that all leads to, I must forgive. Because I want to be like my Father in heaven, and He has forgiven me, so I forgive other people. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14 and 15. These are sobering. I'll just read them 
and leave them with you. Jesus said, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. You're a Christ follower. So am I. That's teaching for us. Another reason why we should forgive is to stop the cycle of blame and pain. There's an amazing verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You know, we call that the love chapter. And, and it's defining what love is and what love is not. And I love verse 5 because it says, Love keeps no record of wrongs. I've often talked about, you know, we have a closet in our lives where we throw our hurts and, and we remember what people have done to us and we put it in that closet and we keep opening that closet and one day we're going to open it and everything's going to spill out because it can't hold anymore. You see, as the followers of Jesus, he calls us to be like him. And what he did is he forgave. He didn't keep a record of wrongs. He lived a life of forgiveness. Let me read Romans chapter 12, 17 through 21. And here's why I want to read it to you, because I'm going to give you one more reason why we ought to forgive, a motivation. And it's because we know that God will take care of us. God's got us. God knows when we're mistreated. God knows when we're hurt. And listen to what God says to us, what he calls us to do, and what he says he will do for us. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it's mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. You get that? God says, you don't do that. You forgive, you love. I'll take care of settling scores. On the contrary, God says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's God's word. Man, it's hard, but do you see how that would change the world in which we live right now? And the only way that'll happen is if Jeff and you and all of us in the kingdom of God start to truly live this way. And at the core is forgiveness. I know here in Dallas, we're still very familiar with what happened a while ago with Botham John. That young man was killed. He was murdered. And we remember the fallout from that, and many of us watched the trial. And there was this scene at the trial that I don't think any of us will ever forget. And that's when Botham's brother, Brant, asked the judge for permission to hug the woman who had shot and killed his brother. Powerful. And in my mind, it was an image, it was an action that summed up everything that we've been talking about these last few moments, right there in one scene. And somebody asked Brant, why did you do that? How could you do that? And let me read what he said. This is what you have to do to set yourself free. Isn't that amazing? So I'm going to ask you. I'm actually going to challenge you. And I'm challenging myself. Who do you, 
Who do I need to forgive? And I challenge us to do whatever it takes to become the kind of people who can truly forgive others, just like God in Christ has forgiven us. Faithful love flowing down from the thorn-covered crown makes me whole, saves my soul, washes whiter than snow. Faithful love calms each fear, reaches down, dries each tear, holds my hand when I can't stand on my own. Faithful love, faithful love from above, came to earth to show the Father's love, and I'll Jesus is his name. Faithful love is a friend just when hope seems to end. Welcome face, sweet embrace, tender touch filled with grace. Faithful love, endless power, living flame, spirit's fire. Jesus is his name, for I've seen faithful love face to face, and Jesus is his name. In light of what we talked about during the message, forgiveness, uh, this time around the Lord's table is incredibly special because it, it's all about how much we've been forgiven by God through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that God forgave us uh, through the work of Jesus Christ and that changes everything about our lives. And as we take the bread and the cup, I hope that this will remind you of how valuable you are, how much God loves you and demonstrates that in how much he's forgiven you, and also be an encouragement for you and me to go and forgive others. I, uh, I wanted to share with you something that I read recently, and it was written by Henry Allen Ironside, who was a preacher of years gone by, an author, a scholar, and uh, he writes about an experience that he was aware of. Uh, let me read it to you. On the Lord's Day, a group of missionaries and believers in New Guinea were gathered together to observe the Lord's Supper. After one young man sat down, a missionary recognized that a sudden tremor had passed through the young man's body that indicated he was under a great nervous strain. Then in a moment, all was quiet again. The missionary whispered, what was it that troubled you? Ah, he said, but that the man who just came in killed my father, and now he has come in to remember the Lord with us. At first, I didn't know whether I could endure it, but it is all right now. He is washed in the same precious blood, and so together they had communion. It's a marvelous thing, Ironside writes, the work of the Holy Spirit, of God 
Does the world know anything of this? And so, as we take the bread and the cup, and as we remember, and as we reflect in our forgiveness, I'm asking you to join me in asking God to help us to be even more forgiving of others. Let's take the bread together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for what you have done through Jesus Christ. We thank you that he gave his body for us. And it was driven by this incredible love that you have for us. And we celebrate the fact that we belong to you through him. And we pray that that will change how we look at each other and how we look at the world. Make us forgivers like you are. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray together as we take from the cup, which the Bible tells us um, represents the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Our Father in heaven, we say thank you again for all that you've done for us. To be washed no matter what we've done, to stand pure before you is an amazing thing. Thank you again for forgiving us. And Lord, we pray that we will forgive others as you have forgiven us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies.
Spirit rejoices in God.